Hey! <laughs> I've just had the quickest dash back to the shop because I picked up this, didn't pick up this. So I was like, literally, it said 12.59. I was like, no! Run back over the shop, run back here really quick. It's a good job I live so fat, so close, isn't it? <laughs> Excuse me a second. I ran. Oh, hi everybody. How are you doing? Uh, happy, happy Thursday. Oh, that was a bit of a rush. <laughs> could not do the advent, could we? This would be disgraceful behaviour. Um, oh, <laughs> Josh just smacked his elbow as well. <laughs> we got Josh filming for us today. Um, no modelling though this time. Um, so hopefully you're all well and you're all good and everybody's Ooh. fine. You right there? Yeah, the control's a bit weird on it. Oh, what's going on? You can't move that bit now, love. Oh, okay. Don't okay, you have to manage. <laughs> Hopefully we've got the Facebook comments coming up on our, my laptop, so we'll be able to see you saying hello. So hi everybody. Hopefully you're all feeling festive and lovely and staying safe. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a daily deal. Okay. So again, I've got a few of these. I took them on a chander. Um, this is one of the Scandi Advents, and I think I've got nine left. Um, so. I'm going to do these at a deal. Okay, so you get your binding fabric in the pack as well. I'm just having a bit of a clear out before the Boxing Day sale. Haha, <laughs> you wait. It's going to be good. It's going to be real good. <laughs> but we've got some of these lovely, lovely Scandi Advents. You might have seen me take them on Hachanda in November. Um, but like I said, we're just trying to clear out some bits and pieces. I know it's an Advent calendar, but you could get it now and you could make it through the, like, the spring ready for next year. So um, they are going to be £7.50 and that includes your binding fabric, okay? So absolute bargain. The, Sean, I think, has already put them on the website for me. Sean's uh, working from the shop today. Um, she's technically working, but she sat, sat quiet in the corner, so she said, I'll change it for you. <laughs> so, um, and I've just persuaded her to do a one o'clock as well. Um, so we're going to get her here this side of the camera too. Um, she's probably on there commenting going, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> so who's there, Josh? Who's there saying hello today? Uh, Heather Price. Hi, Heather. Ali Roberts. Hi, Nikki Ali. England. Hi, who was that, sorry? Nikki England. Hi, Nikki. Caroline Davis. Hi, oh, Caroline. Lovely, lovely. Hi, everybody. Sound. Pardon? So we've got duplicate sound. Got duplicate sound? Yeah, but this isn't producing any sound, shouldn't be. Ooh. Have you got an echo going on? Who's oh, saying it's that? Gone now, it's worry. gone now. It's gone now. All right, cool. Okay, not sure what's happening. Facebook's been really odd the last few few days. Couple last couple of weeks since they did this update, we're getting all sorts of hitches with it. But uh, we'll carry on. So that was the daily deal, the advent, seven pound fifty. Like I said, there are oh. only about eight or nine there. There's Sean. She's saying right. she's on. <laughs> Good, it. So advent time. So number seventeen, because the day is the seventeen. Lovely Susie's already been in today and she's had her voucher. So, number 17, we've got, ooh, so you've got the white gecko merchandise. This is the bag, the badge, and the ruler. Okay, so you're going to get one of our lovely um, rulers that Crafty UK do, one of our tote bags, and one of our very exclusive enamel badges too. So, let's give this a good mix up, get everybody all round and round. Give it a good shake and then they're going to get Josh to have a rummage in there and pick a name for me. Okay, oh, got a blue one and it's 471 and it's Claire Hodges. Claire, there we go. Number 471, that's for you, honey. So that will be coming to you. Congratulations. Let's check that back in there. And uh, that's the advent. So you've still got, what, seven chances? Seven chances to win? Lots to go. Lots and lots to go. So, what we're going to do today, we're going to make some little fabric boxes, okay, and these can be made any size. Um, they were, I saw a thing um, on Pinterest and they were actually made out of paper, and me being me, hmm, what if, what if we make those out of fabric, will it work? So, um, they're little boxes, like little trinket boxes, but you can make these bigger or smaller, you just, as long as you've got the same size squares, and which I'll explain in a minute, you can make these bigger or smaller, but they've got little lids, Okay, now this one was my first one that I did because again, I was trying to work out how to do it because it was, like I said, it was done in paper and I was just like, mm, okay, we've got to be able to do it out of fabric and I couldn't work out without doing a lot of hand sewing 
how to keep all this back okay but so I did a second I did that was my first prototype this is my second prototype and this one was a lot lot neater this was a lot lot nicer so we've got a little uh, and this was too thick as well I'd put too much I put a lot of interfacing in that and it became too thick it was really hard to fold it because it's kind of uh, origami -ed. um so but this this seems to work quite well and I just think if you're given a little gift I think they're really really cute and they can be made out of scraps and you've got a little lid on them and a little little base a nice little gift box okay they can be you can do them bigger we're going to do another one this size today but it doesn't matter what size square you you start with so I started with these this size with a six inch square okay you could do 10 inch squares you could do um, any size you could do a 20 inch square you could start with like half a meter as long as it's square and top and bottom that's that will work so for the base bit you're going to need a six inch square a fabric and a six inch square six inch square can't get my words out today of interfacing okay i've used a firm interfacing i do think it needs to be firm rather than medium if you've got medium i would do two layers okay and then for the top for the box you're going to want two six inch squares and a six inch square of bond web okay and then you want a little tiny sort of two inch i think that's two and a quarter actually square which we're going to put in the the lid as well okay and you're going to need a little bit of glue or bond web or something for that too so first we're going to start with the base okay we're going to start with base so any questions or comments or anything there anybody having a little chat everyone just saying well done to claire right now yeah fabulous yeah, yeah indeed well done claire so all I'm going to do is the shiny side of the iron in interface in. I'm going to put that wrong side, right, you know, the, sorry, the shiny side to the wrong side of the fabric like that. Okay. And it helps if you turn your iron on. Hang on. Let me just plug my iron in. That's because I ran over the shop. I was like, ah, Advent. <laughs> right. Talk to me a second, ladies. <laughs> do you want to <laughs> just wait for the iron to heat up? We're um, going to fuse this together. Grace is watching on the bus going home. From the <laughs> <Sunday>. <laughs> you watch on the bus. Brilliant. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> See, white gecko travels. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else there? Uh, just Taryn and James saying hi. Susan hi, Taryn. Soon as is now saying hi. Hi, yeah. Oh, how's the how's Storm at Sea going, Taryn? Sarah's doing a, uh, a Zoom class today, which is the Storm at Sea class. So, uh, hence why we changed around. So, there we go. That's hot enough now. So, I'm just going to fuse that interface in to the back, the wrong side of my fabric square. Okay. Like this. Just wait for it to get nice and hot so it actually seals down. There we go. So, okay, so you've got that all nice and fused. I always like to give it another little little iron from this side as well. I think it just helps seal it all down. There we go, like that. Okay, is that all nice and stuck? Not quite in that corner. Just wait for it to all heat up a weeny bit. Okay, there we go. So, need to divide it into three. Okay, so because it was six, it's a nice easy one. So I'm going to put my two inch line down the edge like that. Okay. I'm just going to fold it up against like that and really think for it. So I'm running my nail like right along the edge of the ruler like that to give myself a nice crease. And then I can fold that over like that and fold it over again. So I've got it into thirds. And at this point, you're going to give it another iron. Okay, so you've got some nice sharp creases like that. Okay, wait for it to cool down because it gets really hot like that. So I've got some nice creases there like that. And then I'm going to do the same the other way. So I've got like a little grid line. So I'm going to line up two inches like that. And do that little finger crease thing like that. Right along the edge. And then fold that one up. And then this one over like that. And we're going to do exactly the same like this. Okay like this okay so I've got that lovely little grid line so I'm just going to move the iron out of the way a second so that you guys can see this we're now going to form a little box shape so what we want to do is we want to make this crease here in fact actually let me grab a Fritzon pen and I'll just mark them so you can see it a little bit easier so this crease here so can you see it's kind of done this little grid across so I'm going to make this crease here oh, oh it was just shining off the side I was 
Oop, if I can turn it back on. <laughs> Hang on. Josh is playing with the lights. Got it? That way. Let go. There you go. <laughs> you were just signing off with me. It's hard to see. I was just seeing oh, if turning right, off okay. would help. There we go. No, it kind of needs the... Uh, so we're going to put these two creases together. Okay. So I'm going to fold them so that this comes inwards like that. And those two creases match up. Okay. So you're kind of making a little mitre in here like that okay and, and I just finger press down that crease again you've already got an iron crease there but give it a really good squeeze and a finger press okay I'm gonna grab my clips I'm gonna grab my little two clips oh there we go I'm gonna pop a clip up there okay I'm gonna do the same on this corner so those two creases I'm gonna push this in so that crease matches up with that crease like that and give that a good finger press make sure that all goes down nicely take that clip off Ooh, see that one's just gone a bit skew with so you've got to kind of manipulate them a weeny bit like that there we go and pop a clip there so I've got that line in like that and can you see they kind of cross over on the inside can you see that yeah yeah and then we're going to turn it and we're going to do the same this side so I'm going to kind of push that bit in so that seam meets that seam, like that. <laughs> Before you do any of that, you want to use your pinking shears. Oh, so dear, I've forgotten a whole whole, uh, whole step. I was thinking, why is this fraying already? Use your pinking shears around the edge, <laughs> like that. It gives a nice edge to the top and it stops it fraying. Okay, so just take off the very, very edge with your pinking shears, like that. Now, as I was saying, you, I did these with six inch squares, but you could have done, I could have done 10 inch, I could have done, you know, 20 inch. You could just go as big or small as you like. It's the same method. You divide it by three, so you've got that nice even grid, okay? So it doesn't matter, you know, maybe work in threes, you know, maybe do 12 inch squares, because again, that would divide nicely by three. There we go. <laughs> That's better. So I'm going to go in like that and in like that. It's much easier now because I'd already made the creases. <laughs> there we go. And then we're going to do the same the other side. So we're going to push that in to match that corner there. Like that. And pop one there. Can you just turn Beauty and the Beast down a little bit, please, yes. Josh? It's, I thought I turned it down. It, I haven't. Bell singing very loudly at the moment. <laughs> okay. And then fold that one in like that. We've got that and you can see you've got the start of your little box okay got your start of your little box like this okay next thing i did was grab it's a little bit hand sewing just grab a needle sorry and some buttons so i'm going to use some i think should i use little red buttons on this one Ooh. here we go a couple of little red buttons and we're going to stitch those buttons hang on i need my i need a, a a thickish needle, which I've dabbed over here. I was very organised. That's because I got all thrown by the fact that I'd left the advent over, over there. <laughs> so, thickish needle, bit of white cotton, and I'm just going to thread that needle up. So, anybody comment, comment in there, Josh, while I'm uh, threading a needle? Yeah. So Suzanne said that she had a lovely time spending her voucher. Ah, oh, good, good. I'm glad. <laughs> Marion's making soup as she watch. Oh, lovely. Oh, what type of soup are you making, Marion? Claire loves the fact you're always playing Disney movies. <laughs> I love a Disney movie. I'm such a girl. I love a Disney movie. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to put a button right the way through the centre there. So let me show you on this one. Right the way through the centre there, just to hold that si those sides up. Okay, so I'm going to just posh, pop a needle through like that. And we're going to sew a button. Oh, would help if I didn't pull it all the way through, wouldn't it? Like that. And back through like that. There we go. And I tend to go back through that thread because I have put a knot on the end just to anchor it. And we're going to put a button just there. If I can pick it up. Is where you're all watching me sew on a button, which is not very exciting at all. <laughs> there we go. And go through there like that. And you're going to sew a button on both sides just to hold all those little bits 
in place. Okay. There we go. Come on, get him on there. Doesn't need a lot of sewing, just through a couple of times. Trim off that edge there because that's pulling through. There we go. Well, that's the untidiest button I think I've ever done. <laughs> and then just fasten off on the back. Okay. There we go. I like the fact that these are really reusable as well. You know, you could use, reuse those. The other th little thing I did was, I don't know if you saw, I just put a couple of little on this one. I don't know if you can see. I did it in a, in a quite a dark contrasting fabric. Can you get that, Josh? Just on the edges here, and I'm going to do the same on here. I brought my needle up through the crease here. Let me just try and get that through the crease there. Like that. Okay. Like that. And then just did a couple of little tiny back stitches just at the top just to hold that side in and you could do that in a like a pretty contrasting thread or something you know just to make a feature if, if you wanted to but I'm just going to use this white for now knot it off like that and push it back through the crease so that it disappears okay and you do that both sides okay so I would do it on this side like that and on this side I put my button through and then stitch my sides down so that you've got the bottom of your box Okay, nice and easy, nice and quick and simple. Okay, so I would stitch this side and then do both of those. And if we've got time at the end, I'll do that. But you end up with a little box shape without that thread. Okay, and it doesn't fray particularly because I've done the, the pink and sheer bit. Okay, you could then put a little piece of tissue paper or something in there, drop your gift in before we do the lid. Okay, so for the lid, you're going to need two pieces of fabric which are the same size so again because I use six inches for the base I'm using six inches for the top and this time we're going to bond a web them together because you like you can you can see it more and it's all folded over um, it gave you a little bit more stability to it as well I am I did two layers on this one and we bond a web them together so I'm going to pop my little so if you want to come over here to the iron Josh I'm going to put my bond web which is rough side which is the glue down Okay, first, and iron that in place. My iron's nice and hot now. <laughs> like that. So get that ironed in place. And then give it a shake. Let's get rid of the heat. Just score it and take off that paper. Okay, so that the glue's now attached to the fabric. So I'm going to take off that paper. Oh, didn't quite attach that. That again, put the shape, pull it down. There we go. Get rid of this side. Oh, there we go, like that. So now it feels kind of shiny, but that's because that's the glue. And then I want to line up my other piece of fabric, my other square on top of it, and just sandwich it together so I've got like a double sided fabric. You know, if you've got like batiks, you probably wouldn't need to do this with batiks because they're a little bit stiffer. And they're double sided um, but it gave it just a, a stiffness which meant I could work easier with it okay so. Marie's asking how are your hands oh my hat the um, gripper bar ones I've uh, all cleared up nicely I've still got a few bruises they're going nice and yellow now uh, but my finger my dodgy finger that I cut it's still really painful I think it's the nerves growing back and it's all all strange but yeah it's still quite sensitive to the touch that one but I'm I'm on the mend. Oh yeah, God, I'm a I'm such a klutz. It's uh, unbelievable. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so I've. But thank you for asking. <laughs> okay, so I've just bond web those together. Okay, which gives it a, makes it a bit thicker, and it just means that you've got pretty both sides as well. Then. With this one, you're going to iron it slightly differently. So you're going to fold it in half like this. And iron in that crease okay like that and then you're going to fold it in half the other way and iron in that crease like that so it's quite difficult to see on camera but you've got a grid line now but going right the way through the middle you then want to fold the corners into the center like this okay 
So it's a bit like making one of those those things we did at school, you know, <laughs> when you did when you put. Oh, you probably you had a phone. That's why you didn't do that at school, Josh. Josh is looking at me really weird as if to say, "What are you talking about, mother?" But I'm sure you lot all know what I mean. You know, when you had to choose a colour and then a number, and then there was an insult or something nice underneath. One of those. <laughs> okay. So, and then we're going to fold all the corners in to the centre, like this. Again, keep ironing it. And fold this one in, Ooh, and it gets really hot. <laughs> Get your fingers out of the way. I bet all the ladies are saying, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> no? <laughs> Any questions or comments there while I do this last bit here? Oh, here they come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See? That's what we did before we had mobile phones at school, Josh, is we made things out of paper and insulted people like you, that. You make it sound like my mobile phone was good. And it had, like, apps and stuff. It was just a texting phone. It really was only a texting phone. <laughs> you could kill somebody with that thing. Yeah, it was a bit of a brick. <laughs> okay, so we're going to come back over here so you can see. So what you've got now is you've kind of got this, like, that looks like this. Okay, so it's all folded into the centre. Oh, I've completed what I'm doing. Oh, I know. <laughs> My brain went there then. Okay. Next thing you want to do is you're going to fold it down. So, found it easier to put some clips on the edge. I was like, that's not going to work. It's because I haven't done the next step. Don't like that. To hold these edges in. Like that. Okay. We're then going to fold this edge down to the center like that. Okay. And again, if you just do that and that, so that edge is meeting the centre with all the all the points came in, okay? And you need to iron that. There's lots of ironing with this, not much sewing, lots of ironing. Okay, like that. And then we're going to do the same on this one, okay? So we're going to move that clip, move that clip, and move this down to like that. We've got like three names for your things now. What's that? Fortune tellers. Fortune tellers, that's it. What else? Yeah, song I think that's what we used to call them. Salt and pepper pots and chatterboxes. Oh, right. Oh, I've never heard them called salt and pepper pots. Oh, cool. Yeah, fortune tellers. That's what we used to call them at school. <laughs> there we go. So, got something that looks like that in a minute. Okay, giving it a good iron. Take those clips off. Okay, and then you're going to do the same the other way. Okay, which is, it gets a bit fiddly at this point, but clips are brilliant for this and it's also a lot easier when you're doing it right close up to yourself and not at, not at an angle okay and then that one comes to the center as well like that so again I'm ironing it in a grid that I can fold against like that so are you all with me so far with this one I fold it in half and a half to make a, a grid that way I then folded all my points in like that and now I'm folding them down in to meet that middle, okay, and ironing at each stage. Okay, there we go. So give that a good eye on that side, and then a good eye on that side. There we go. Okay, so and I got something that looks it looks really messy at this point, like this. Okay, so we're gonna I'm gonna try and do this. So I'm gonna open this one out, and again we're gonna fold. I'm hoping you can see it, that crease there to that crease there. Just like we did on the other box, we're going to fold that one to that one, like that. Now I'm going to try and do this towards you guys, okay? So you're going to push in on the corner, so it goes that one to that one, like that. I'm hoping Josh can get this. And then this folds back over, like that, okay? So I'll redo that for you. So I'm folding corner to corner, like that to make that seam there, just like we did on the other one. And then this is gonna go over the top, and this is really hard to do facing you guys, like that. Put a clip on there, okay? Kate's asking if it should have been pinked. Pinked, pinked. This one doesn't get pinked, no. Don't worry about pinking this one, because all, every, all the raw edges are on the inside with this one. Okay, and then again, I'm gonna push that bit in, like that, so that that, that seam hits that seam, like that. Yeah. Hang on, I've got to do this a bit towards me first time and then I'll turn it to you because you just, it's... There we go, like that. There we go. So I've done corner to corner like that and then all that goes 
over the top like that okay I'll try and do it again for you on the other side it's very difficult to show you this on camera so um, let me just point these out before I do the other side so that's one side of the box done you've got a seam here which you'll be able to see if you do this yourself you've got a seam a little crease there and a crease there and a crease there and a crease there so if I do that those are the two that we're we're concentrating on those two there okay so I open that bit out on the opposite side of this I'm going to push in there and in there so they go inwards those two seams will like that will join up like that okay I'm hoping you guys can see this I'm going to push inwards there so those two seams join up like that and then you push it all the way over like that okay so and then you just give it a give it a wiggle give it a fiddle and a wiggle like that and then put clips on the side there we go okay so you can see now you've got your kind of lid do you guys need me to go through that again or you're all right with it did you see it okay before i seal this down sh shout if you want me to open that out and show you again but so in order to seal all this down so all all your raw edges on the bo the top of the box are actually all enclosed apart from the very end uh, middle bit there and that's where you want your little two and a half inch square like that well two and a quarter sorry which is going to sit in like that and cover it all up okay so i put a little bit of bonder web on this what are they saying do they want me to open that up and show them again did, did you get the gist of it or do you need me to show you again guys i know that was a lot of fingers and thumbs then but it's quite difficult to get it get my fingers out of the way and hold it just for you guys to see yeah you're all okay with it fab okay so little piece of bonder web on the back like that or you then peel it off and stick it in or you can do a little squirt of basting spray which i'm going to do now for easiness okay so i'm going to give it a power says you could stitch a ribbon <clears throat> you could stitch a ribbon through the center oh you could yeah that would be good so on on this one i did actually put a button on the top and try to keep it down but i decided it was a bit messy which worked fine if it was paper but it, i still didn't like how messy it was so that's why i thought let's cover it up with a little square of fabric a little bit of basting spray on there like that stick it in and then kind of smooth it down with your fingers like that and then you can take the clips off and really really finger press this now you can get your iron in there and give that a good press round each side like that Ooh, get in there oh, hang on i didn't stick that down that bit hang on and get my finger in there i'm making this look way harder than it is because i whipped through these last night i was like oh these are really cute get in there there we go like that okay and then all i did was just like i did on the on the little box i just put a tiny little back stitch in fact i'll do that for you now because you won't you'll see it just came up through the corner there like that you don't have to actually if you use bonder web rather than the basting spray tuck that in tuck that in get in there there we go and you can just do a tiny little back stitch in there and hide it in and i i would use a a red not a you know so that it hit it was hidden in come on go through sorry it's kind of trying to do it away from me there we go okay you can just do a little tiny back stitch through that corners if you use the bond i didn't have to stitch that one at all i used the bond web in there which held it all in place much better i have to say than the basting spray so if you do a little back stitch like that okay see that one's yeah it does need the. i think it needs the bond web i think it needs the bond web to hold it down that yeah you can see that basting spray actually hasn't worked so let me do let me do the bond web because that really did work last night when I did that. So let me put the clips back on a second. I thought, oh, for time, I'll just use basting spray, but that didn't work. So don't use basting spray, ladies. Definitely don't do that. <laughs> use um, 
use the bond web method. So we're going to put a piece of bond web on the back of here, like that. Iron it down. Take the paper off. Ah, hot, 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 hot. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to stick that into there with the bond web, and that really did hold it in place because you can see with that one, it's all stayed together really nicely. Okay, and then don't hold the iron into. If you've got one of those tiny, tiny little micro irons, you can get it inside. However, I actually found that that worked quite well. There we go. Okay. Oh, I've just melted a pin. Get the little iron in there, like that. There we go. That's now held that in place, which will then sit on top. Now, I haven't stitched this one, so I'm going to use this one. Sit on top of the little box, like that. And you've got your little box, little trinket box. Okay, so you can see, I've, like I said, different ways of doing it. This one I used interfacing and bond web on, and it didn't. Um, it was just really thick it was really I mean it's really sturdy but it didn't have to take some folding and pressing so if you come up to me a minute left, I'm gonna yeah. a bit now um it really really took a lot of a lot of folding and I needed a lot of clips to do that so I don't think you need interfacing and bond web in the lid I think just the bond web is absolutely fine um and then when I was doing where's the other little box gone oh there it is <laughs> Like I said, you can see here. So this, I would just have needed to backstitch all the way around. And that had interfacing and bond web as well. So I interfaced it, but then I put the bond web on top and did a double layer. But it was so, it was so thick. It, I was struggling to get my needle through to tack it up. Um, so yeah, I don't, I mean, I will finish that one off. Um, but I don't think you need interfacing and bond web. I think you Sonia get away with it. it. Sonia asks, is, um, will fabric glue pens work um what for sticking in the top bit yeah um yeah it should do or a bit of pva glue that would work yeah pva would work as well um there you go that's stuck now just needed a needed a second to cool down um yeah or some just a little bit of pva you put that in there in fact you could rather than use bond web you could pva two fabrics together and that would make it stiff enough to fold an iron too um, but you know, I'm as a quilter, I've got lots of bond web in the house, so that's what I used. But yeah, you can see that that would now go. Is this going to work? Hang on, let me pin that one rather than because it's not sewn together yet. <coughs> there we go, and then that would go over that one. There you go, and that fits and makes a little box. <coughs> oh, sorry, the glue's made me cough. Drew is right, it does make you, does make you cough sometimes. <laughs> there we go. So, but like I said, if you wanted to make them bigger, you could just, you know, you could cut 12 inch squares and they would come out, you know, a do, more sort of like A5-y type size box. Um, you know, that sort of size. But I just thought they were really cute. They'd make really sweet, um, like, you know, Christmas, you know, on your Christmas table, you could fill them with some, you know, me, me and chocolate. Lint chocolates would fit in there just about right. You could get probably get two in there, do it as a little place setting. Or if you were doing favours for a wedding when we're allowed proper weddings again, they'd be really cute. You could do them in those as well. Um, but yeah, it was just a way of adapting a paper idea and doing them in fabric. So little fabric gift boxes. Or if, you know, your husband has bought you a nice piece of jewellery or something, you could make one and say, I'd like you to fill this, please. <laughs> A Tiffany box, a green Tiffany box would fit in beautifully in that. <laughs> so, you know, or, you know, you could just about, you might get a fat eighth rolled up in there if you're lucky. You know, I was going to say you get a fat quarter in there, but you wouldn't. <laughs> so any other questions or comments there? Uh, Marie says they're cute. They are really sweet, aren't they? Marie like I said, you can make them bigger. Yeah, go for it. Go for it, go for it. Yeah, definitely bond web. I thought that might work with the... I didn't try it last night with the baste and spray, but yeah, that's worked lovely with the bond web on that, that square. That's fine, though. Uh, it's always worth trying other things, isn't it? Anything else? Pamela says, is your husband listening? Uh, probably not. He's in work. And he doesn't watch... He watched, like, the first couple. Like, like with the Chander, he watched the first one. And then he's like, oh, you've done it now. I don't need to watch everyone. <laughs> 
but uh, I'll just, yeah, Josh is listening. Josh can point him in the right direction. <laughs> Little Tiffany box would be lovely. Thank you very much. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, just everyone saying they're cute. Yeah. yeah. Nice, just a nice, again, nice way of using up scraps, Christmas scraps you've got there, you know? So, um, so yeah. Um, and just a little, you know, little something different. So we will be back on Monday. We'll do a live tomorrow just to do the advent. We'll just do a quick live from the shop. And then we'll be back on Monday. Um, and we've only got lives Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday next week, because then we break up for Christmas. Um, but we will be back with our lives on the 4th of January. We have got a chanda on the 28th, so if you are missing us, you can watch Sarah on the chanda. Um, but then we will be back to full complement on the on the 4th of Jan for, for lives. So you've got three left before Christmas, and then you don't have to listen to me for a little while. Um, but it looks like the shop's going to be shut for a little while, so we'll, we'll sort all that out um, and uh, let you know what's happening. Um, because in Wales, we're going into a, a lockdown straight after Christmas, We'll still do deliveries and the website will still be open and stuff. So don't worry. But um, cool. I will see you on Monday. Um, I will come up with something interesting, no doubt, for you, hopefully. <laughs> see you soon. Take care, guys. Bye.